So after talking with some lovely people on my Discord server, the topic of things I said in an old rant that I did on the Disney Channel back in 2010, that came up. And then the thought was, man, I really wish you could revisit it. So I just thought, why don't I see if it's in an old external hard drive? And sure enough, it's still there from February of 2010. It is my old rant on the Disney Channel. So again, back when I was 21, I had already done Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. So I remember having commenters and subscribers saying, yeah, hey, please do the Disney Channel one. And I had to come up with something to say about it because I wasn't a fan of the Disney Channel like I was of the other two. Obviously, people still remember it because they've still been asking. So I'm sure some of you are going to really enjoy going down memory lane as I go into a deep dive revisiting of a Disney Channel rant from 2010 in 2024. I've been getting a lot of requests to do the Disney Channel. It seems very logical I should do it, since I've torn Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network a new one. But there's one problem. I never watched the Disney Channel. You see, growing up as a Nickelodeon fan and later Cartoon Network, to me, all the Disney Channel shows seemed like they were made for four-year-olds. I really couldn't stand Winnie the Pooh, because I thought it was for babies. And to me, that's all the Disney Channel seemed to represent. Baby shows. Kid shows that were too clean and politically correct for Nickelodeon. At the time, Nickelodeon was also exclusively on cable while Disney was on regular TV. So I felt a little sense of kid pride being able to watch a cable network that had cooler shows rather than a basic TV channel. That right there. That basically summed up why, as a child, I thought the Disney Channel was beneath me. Nickelodeon and then Cartoon Network were on cable, while Disney wasn't. And in those days, your household either had cable or your household didn't. And if you're going to tell me, oh, yes, it was on cable, let me tell you what life was like back then. In the 1990s, Disney was on basic cable, not premium. Channels that were listed as basic cable, which mainly were consisting of the major networks like ABC, NBC, Fox, etc., they were also broadcast and available to analog TVs without a cable subscription. Whereas the channels that were only available by a premium, for whatever reason, we just simply called it as cable. So when people said they had cable, that usually meant the premium services, which required the boxes. So yes, because I grew up with cable and was watching Nickelodeon very regularly and then Cartoon Network, I had no time nor interest in the Disney Channel in my formative years. And in in terms of it felt like they were all shows meant for four-year-olds when I said that, here's the context there. Growing up, when kids talked to each other about shows they didn't like, it was common for them to say, oh, that show's for babies. (laughs) Haha, <laughs> you like that show. Where's your diaper and your baba? It was actually a reason why I had to be a closeted Power Rangers fan for so long because of peer pressure at school. I didn't want to be hearing such a statement. And for a few years growing up, um, I was babysat by a lovely older lady in the neighborhood named Sherry. And lots of younger toddlers were also being babysat by her. And they'd be watching stuff on ABC and Disney along with Barney and other shows meant for pre-K and younger. So it was easy for me as a Nickelodeon kid who knew the difference between main roster Nickelodeon and Nick Jr. to just group all the Disney content all together. The only things I probably would have cared for would have been the old 1930s and 40s classic Disney cartoon shorts. You know, with Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy and others. So, being a Nickelodeon diehard at the time, I spat on all the Disney Channel kids. Because in my mind, their crap was inferior to my nine-year-old Nickelodeon self. 
it also seemed to me that the Disney Channel was more of a girly channel than anything. Another turnoff to prepubescent boys who still think girls are gross and intimidating. Now, 14 years after I released that rant, I have no clue why I felt the Disney Channel was a girly network, as I said. Maybe it was because of the girls in school sporting Disney princess theme stuff. Maybe it was the Disney princess doll commercials that were on any network. Who really knows? Maybe it seemed to me at the time because girls were typically not fans of the gross out humor that Nickelodeon had a good chunk of that it felt like Nickelodeon was more for boys and Disney was more for girls. But again, you're talking to a 10 year old, 11 year old at the time. So, yeah, I definitely knew everything I knew when I was 11 or 12. I didn't start paying attention to anything off the Disney Channel until the outbreak of teen idols Miley Cyrus and the Jonas Brothers. Oh, boy. My oldest niece was eight around that time when all of a sudden the Hannah Montana fever broke out amongst little girls. I was around 17, 18, and of course I'd be getting exposed to this crap whenever I was near her and she wanted to watch TV. So I saw glimpses of shows like That's So Raven, you know, the second little girl from the Cosby show now all grown up, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, High School Musical, and only one thought came to my mind. What the fuck is this shit? Not only was my niece heavily into the Disney Channel at this time, but even my late brother bonded with her over it. He even went as far as singing along to the Hannah Montana theme song. And then right after he passed, I remember staying at their house for a couple weeks just to keep their kids company. And sure enough, that second high school musical had just come out and was on repeat, as well as other stuff on the Disney Channel. Now, as an older teenager at the time, I thought about my brother. Come on, man, what the hell are you thinking? How can you sing that song and like this stuff with her? But now as a 36-year-old who dearly misses his late brother and still remembers his voice singing, you put the limo out front, you know, and hopes one day to have a child of my own, now I get it. What I read about the Disney Channel programming is that during the 80s and 90s, they did show the old animated shorts that were made when Walt Disney was still alive. And they also had shows made by Walt Disney Television which I vaguely remembered, a lot of them being TV shows featuring characters from old Disney movies. I remember there was an Aladdin show, and there are probably others. Of, of course, they removed the old classic Disney tunes from the lineup in the 2000s and started their little Disney Channel original programming. Oh, gee, where have I seen that before? Of course, I heard they have brought the animated shows back only to be in time slots when kids today are sleeping and could only be seen if you own a DVR. Well, then again, who doesn't have one these days? I can see how they were all trying to be cool and trying to catch up to what Nickelodeon was doing with their own spin, but in my mind, they failed miserably. This was also during the time when I stopped watching Nickelodeon because of how cruddy it became, turning into a kid MTV and all that, and when I got exposed to this Disney Channel crap because of the little girls in my family, I couldn't tell the difference anymore. The Disney Channel was probably much better when it still had the Mickey Mouse influences around, but I don't see it anywhere anymore, except for probably the logo. Yup. Keeping with the theme of those old nostalgia rants I did at the time, oh, I was always better in the good old days. Oh, why did they take away the good old stuff? Oh, the new stuff sucks. Oh, my childhood is ruined. Why are they taking away the old cartoons? How dare they? God damn. I definitely came off as some whiny, nostalgic, crazed teenager. And I was 21 at the time. And some of you people wonder why I deleted a lot of these old rants in the first place a few years ago. I'm not the same person I was 14 years ago. If you are the same person you are 14 years ago, you pretty much have messed up in life, just saying. And my mentality towards what's on kids programming has shifted long away from, oh, you're stupid if you like what I don't like, into, okay, it's cool. 
You can have your chocolate if it makes you happy. I'll just stick with my vanilla. Hey, uh, do you want hot fudge or caramel on that? And that's where my problem lays with the channel. The Disney Channel basically has nothing to do with Disney anymore. Instead, being another kid MTV network, I'd, I'd say more for girls than boys. MTV is bullshit to begin with, and yet I continue to see kids today rot their brains by growing into it. Proven fact, when my oldest niece was around nine, she'd watch such horrible abominations like High School Musical, and then when I entered the room a second time, I'd catch her watching shows on MTV where teenage girls and young women talked about dating and putting out. You're not supposed to see that crap when you're nine. Girls are supposed to think boys are idiots at nine. There used to be a big fucking distinction between shows made for kids and shows made for insecure, retarded, teenage idiots. But now I can't tell where kid networks end and MTV bullshit begins. Ah, uh, yeah, I still think that statement still remains true. Especially because nowadays, most kids get their entertainment on TV on YouTube. So they don't necessarily need to watch a specific channel. Everything is pretty much on demand. Parents can try as hard as they can to shelter their kids from what they perceive as smut, but it's super easy for the kid to discover something that they should not be watching nor listening to. And therefore, it's easier than ever for a young, impressionable child to stumble on something trashy, as I would have said, and too mature for their eyes, and potentially get influence from it. Plus, like I said before in a 2021 video I said about Nickelodeon, we live in a day and age where there's more references to LGBTQ content on children's television and teenage shows, and there's a lot of people especially liberal and progressive families who don't see any harm in it. And I said a few years before the revelations about Nick's problems with certain shows sexualizing their teenage actors, keep in mind this revisiting is being recorded after I watched Quiet on Set, so if you haven't already heard my thoughts on that, the links to that are in the description. Disney for me is all about the animated feature-length films. They have the distinction of being the first to ever make a full-length animation film, you know, with Snow White and all, and are supposed to be the top dogs of it. Their live-action films, well, other than a few memorable ones, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, I could take them or leave them, since their bad films have the script-writing skills of an orangutan. Their animated films are the ones that make the most impact. Kids and adults could enjoy them, and many of the animated films, past, present, and future, are timeless classics in terms of quality and history. Before I was born, the Disney animated films were getting their asses kicked by people like Don Bluth in terms of popularity. That, of course, suddenly changed after Who Framed Roger Rabbit and Little Mermaid helped Disney return to the top in animation. Out came Beauty and the Beast, and even though it's an animated chick flick, it's got to be one of the best films, period. It was nominated for Best Picture, and even though it lost to Silence of the Lambs, no other animated film has been nominated for Best Picture. Ugh, okay, obviously I wasn't paying too much attention to the Oscars at the time in 2010, because in 2009, Up got nominated, and 2010, Toy Story 3 got nominated. Now, Up being nominated, I understand. It's a great movie. In fact, it's such a good movie that my father, who normally doesn't watch feature-length animated films, even he loves the movie Up. Toy Story 3, not as good as Toy Story 2, but ooh, that ending hits you hard emotionally. But you can pretty much see in this rant that I'm going over the Disney Renaissance where I'm, again, being some nostalgic guy going, oh, it's better in the good old days. Here's what they did in the good old days where they were churning out major hit after hit in the 90s. So, I mean, I think I've made my point. You know, then out came Aladdin and Lion King. Two really good films that kids and adults could enjoy. But after that, it turned south again really quick in terms of quality once Pocahontas came out. Whether I liked films like Hercules, Mulan, Tarzan, or not, you know, Disney were still top dogs again in animated films. I live only 35 minutes away from Disneyland when the 91 freeway isn't such a goddamn parking lot. And I've seen it change. 
when I first went there, it was just after Aladdin came out, and many new attractions like the parade at that time were Aladdin-themed. I also remember a lot of stuff relating to the classic Disney animations, you know, like Fantasyland having rides based on the movies like Alice in Wonderland, Cinderella, uh, Mr. Toad, and stuff like that. And a lot of the classic characters like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck were always recognized. But nowadays, I don't think any young kid in that place knows who Mickey Mouse is, nor how big of an impact that, that cartoon character created by Walt Disney had on pop culture. Now, I was definitely wrong about this statement about kids at the time not knowing who Mickey was. I made that original rant in February 2010, many months before I met the woman who eventually became my ex-wife, along with her son. In the early years of our relationship from 2011 to 2013, we did a lot of days spent going to Disneyland with or without our young son. And whenever he did go, we used to tell him, hey, we're going to Mickey's house. We were annual pass holders at the time, and back then the payment plans were quite affordable. So we used to use that pass pretty regularly. And that gave me enough time to see more of the park than most tourists got to see on a single visit. And I saw the park definitely still had its share of showcasing the old history and nostalgia behind it. And yes, kids who visited either Disneyland or California Adventure, they definitely knew who the old cartoon characters were. Nowadays, the prices to visit Disneyland are absolutely insane. Plus, all the things that used to be free like Fast Pass now cost money. Getting an annual pass is also much harder to get. And if you want to visit the park, you still need to reserve a spot ahead of time to enter. I get during COVID, but even during normal times, they're still doing this. And even with the inflation and price spikes, the place still attracts too many people for them to have to use this reserve system? How is that possible? Gone are the days where you can just show up, buy the tickets the day of, enter the park if you decide to, you want to kill an evening or an afternoon. It definitely feels like it's no longer the park for middle class, blue collar families to enjoy. Nah, man, you're too poor, then send your broke ass to Knott's Berry Farm, where gangs sometimes use the place as a public battleground. The Disney Channel and everything it represents now, trying to be an MTV for little girls, is an abomination. I can't believe it has gotten the attention it has. Miley Cyrus has absolutely no talent whatsoever. And looking up to her as an idol is detrimental to the human mind. Because all it says to little girls is, We just need a rich country star daddies to get his record contracts. You just watch. Miley will slowly turn into another Britney Spears, who was on the Mickey Mouse Club a ways back. Innocent and young, and then old and whore. <laughs> well, that prediction definitely came true. When I made that rant in 2010, Miley was already entering the Can't Be Tamed era, where she was still 17 in that risque album cover, and was acting in movies like The Last Song. So she was already transitioning her gimmick from a teenage pop star to another, Look at me, I'm a rebellious sex symbol wannabe! I mean, that bareback publicity photo that I put up on the video when I made that prediction? She was 15 when that photo came out. And then the bangers era happened. Her bangers tour, the music video, and the famous live performance of We Can't Stop, which made everybody feel dirty after watching it. And that goddamn song Wrecking Ball with that godforsaken music video of her swinging naked on a wrecking ball. Ugh. Oh. Uh, it still leaves a sour taste in my mouth because at the time you could not stop hearing about her and her face was plastered almost everywhere. She not only guest starred on Saturday Night Live and performed on it, but then I remember her appearing unannounced just to say she was going on tour. So, of course, I was like, go away, Miley. I don't care. Go away. Years later, on the other hand, she grew up and matured, and she cut back on the drug use. And if I caught her presence on something like a TV show, she wasn't as obnoxious anymore. That doesn't mean I'll ever listen to her music. She has one good song, I think, The Climb, 
when she wasn't living the gimmick, as they say, and was actually able to showcase her talent on TV appearances, I actually thought, wait a minute, she's actually good at what she does. So for her to have the career she's had since then, something that surpassed her dad, she obviously has to be doing something right. So no, I don't hate her, but I will not be caught dead listening to her, even if it's a cover of Metallica, which I know she's done. As for the Jonas Brothers, I think it's pretty funny to see all these YouTube videos making fun of Kevin Jonas' guitar playing, jokingly comparing him to Eddie Van Halen and Joe Satriani. That's like comparing dog shit turds to filet mignons. Now, I'm not going to groan about why 12-year-old kids are into them and not into good rock bands, because I didn't become a diehard Metallica fan until I was 18. You know, let them grow Let them grow into it. I am pretty certain they will. The Jonas Brothers, like boy bands in the 90s, will simply become a phase in a girl's life and become a faded afterthought of, Oh my God, why did I like these guys then? They suck! The South Park episode that made fun of Disney and the Jonas Brothers said it perfectly why this Hannah Montana and Jonas Brothers crap is so popular. And to quote the Mickey Mouse character, because little girls are fucking stupid. Kids today are going to see the Disney Channel, which is now flooded by Miley Cyrus and Jonas Brothers bullshit, and wonder why Disneyland isn't like them. Now, if you're listening to me, correct me if I'm wrong when I claim that the Disney Channel doesn't have the Disney influences it once had that Disneyland still has, and that the ever-expensive Disneyland theme park is our only link to what Disney in general used to be. Well, whatever happened to the Jonas Brothers? Did you know they actually went on hiatus and eventually split up not long after this rant was released? Sure, they may be back together as of this recording, but in all honesty, do people even know they're still around? And, you know, I mentioned a couple times about High School Musical that I thought, oh, this is one of the stupidest things ever. But that was a long time ago. And there were definitely actors and actresses who eventually had respectable careers afterwards, especially Zac Efron, who was recently in a movie called The Iron Claw, which is about a wrestling family known as the Von Erichs. And he was really good in it. And it was a good movie. So I definitely no longer see him as someone who was part of High School Musical. Raven Simone, she still has a respectable career. Vanessa Hudgens, she's still making music and movies. Already went over Miley. Don't really mention much about Cole and Dylan Sprouse. They may be Zach and Cody to a lot of people, but to me, they'll always be the little kid from Adam Sandler's Big Daddy. And all these people I talked about who were young, they were teenagers or really young adults when that rant was originally released, they've all grown up and move on. And so have I. But since I know there's those of you who wanted me to revisit this one, I have done it for you. You're welcome. Now, what about the Disney Channel now? What about Disney Plus? What about many of the shows that are pretty much as good as a middle school report card grade of D plus? I really don't care. It's nice to have access to the old library on streaming. And as much as I have problems with the newer Star Wars TV series, I still watch them. That says something. And I know that Marvel continues to have their fans with their TV series on it. They may go over like a fart in church most of the time, but if you watch those shows and enjoy them, then good for you. And just like how a lot of old Nickelodeon shows and movies are on Paramount Plus and a bunch of older stuff on Disney Plus, once again, like I said in the Nick revisit, now that I can have my vanilla anytime I want it, I can... I don't care how much chocolate the rest of you all have. You like it, you like it. Great. So thank you so much for listening to this revisit of the Disney Channel rant from 2010. If you want to hear more revisitings or just more content from myself, if you have not done so anyway, please leave a like and subscribe for more Coyote Rants or Burgers and Fries podcast episodes. I'm Desert Coyote 22. Thanks for listening.